Hey everyone, I wanted to let you know that there has been an officially released statement on D&D Beyond from Wizards of the Coast regarding the OGLs, the SRDs, and 1D&D. And it's kind of uh, amazing. I was just in a conversation uh, less than an hour ago with people on my Discord, and we were talking about the original statement that Wizards of the Coast had made in response to rumors that the OGL was going away, and basically they had said, we're going to continue to support creators, uh, the OGL, we're going to keep it, but it's going to continue to evolve. And this was treated largely as a non-statement and maybe that they were hiding something. And I had said, I read it as them saying that the rumor is false, but they haven't decided yet whether the OGL will be changed, but they plan to continue to support creators through an OGL. And then I was pointed to this statement which gives actually all the details. So this is what's happening with OGLs, SRDs, 1D&D. This is also what's happening with virtual tabletops because a lot of the comments from my viewers when I was talking about new virtual tabletops coming to you know uh, the D&D Beyond platform is that they would stop supporting third-party virtual tabletops like Roll20 and Foundry and make sure 1D&D couldn't work on those. This answers that as well. So we love the interest and passion the community has for D&D. I don't think they've necessarily loved the passion that they've seen lately because we've seen a lot of outrage. We love D&D too. So when we see the D&D community concerned by rumors and misunderstandings, we want to clear the air and share the facts with you, even if it's a bit earlier than our original plan. You all matter to us, and we want to provide transparency on how D&D will continue supporting third-party creators. So here are the facts. Number one. Will 1D&D include an SRD and be covered by an OGL? Yes. First, we are designing 1D&D with the 5th edition backwards compatibility. And I've talked a little bit before. I don't think it's fully compatible, but uh, obviously they're trying to keep backwards compatibility in mind. So all existing creator content that is compatible with 5th edition will also be compatible with 1D&D. Second, we will update the SRD for 1D&D as we complete its development. I mean, there's no point in them updating the SRD right now because it's still in playtest, so it's going to be changing all the time. And they say that. Development that is informed by the results of the playtests that we're conducting with hundreds of thousands of D&D players now. Number two, will the OGL terms change? And it says, yes, we will release version 1.1 of the OGL in early 2023. The OGL needs an update to ensure that it keeps doing what it was intended to do. Allow the D&D community's independent creators to build and play and grow the game we all love without allowing things like third parties to mint D&D NFTs. And that's actually probably a good point because I bet you when the OGL was drafted, there was no concern about that. But obviously it's a concern now and frankly, I'll be glad if the OGL shuts that down. And large businesses to exploit our intellectual property. And that seems fair enough. So what is changing? First, we're going to make sure that the OGL 1.1 is clear about what it covers and what it doesn't. OGL 1.1 makes it clear it only covers material for use in or as TTRPGs, and those materials are only ever permitted as printed media or static electronic files like EPUBs and PDFs. Other types of content, like videos, video games, are only possible through the Wizards of the Coast fan content policy or a custom agreement with us. To clarify, outside of printed media and static electronic files, the OGL doesn't cover it. So if you want to make D&D toys and call them D&D toys, the OGL does not cover you. But if you are making D&D role-playing games or supplements for D&D, it does cover you. Will this affect the D&D content and services players use today? It shouldn't. The top VTT platforms, so that'll be things like Roll20 and Foundry, already have custom agreements with Wizards to do what they do. In other words, there's been lots of rumors that you won't be able to use 1D&D on Roll20 or Foundry. They'll find some way to prevent that from working. They say they already have written agreements with these platforms to continue to allow them to support D&D. So will you be able to play 1D&D on Roll20? Their answer is yes, and we've already made that agreement with Roll20. D&D merchandise, like minis and novels, were never intended to be part of the OGL, and OGL 1.1 won't change that. Creators wishing to leverage D&D for those forms of expression will need, as they always have needed, 
custom agreements between us. So that first part really doesn't affect the standard content creator. If you're making stuff for tabletop role playing, then the OGL isn't going to prevent you from doing that. So let's talk about what does change for content creators making tabletop role playing supplements. We're updating the OGL to offer different terms to creators who choose to make free share like content and creators who want to sell their products. What does it mean for you as a creator? If you're making share like content, very little is going to change from what you're already used to. If you are making commercial content, relatively little is going to change for most creators. For most of you who are selling custom content, here are the new things you'll need to do. Number one, accept the license terms and let us know what you're offering for sale. So this is going to be a website they're going to set up. You're going to go into the website. You're going to agree to the open gaming license for the product you're selling. So it's probably going to be like, I'm going to make a subclass for one D and D and I promise to follow the terms of the OGL. Number two, you have to report OGL related revenue annually if you make more than 50,000 in a year. This will not affect the majority of content creators. The majority of the content creators using the OGL aren't making big money doing it. Uh, and they're not even really making a living doing it. But those who are, will need to let them know. And yes, I'm making a living doing this. I imagine this is information that's useful to Wizards of the Coast to know what the D&D players are buying. Number three, include a creative product badge on your work. And I thought that was already a requirement because when I've seen third party content, it always has that OGL sticker on it. And I assume this is the same thing, but maybe they're updating it. But basically it's been there all along. They put a little badge saying that this is published under the open gaming license. When we roll out OGL 1.1, we will also provide explanatory videos, facts, and a web portal for registration to make navigating these requirements as easy and intuitive as possible. We'll also have help available to creators to navigate the new process. For the fewer than 20 creators worldwide who make more than, get this, 750,000 in income in a year. Like that's not even sales, in income. So that's a lot of money. These are people who are rich. We will add a royalty starting in 2024. So even for the creators making significant money, not significant money, selling D&D supplements and games, no royalties will be due for 2023, and all revenues below three quarters of a million dollars in future years will be royalty free. So they don't have to pay a royalty unless they're earning more than three quarters of a million dollars, and then they will have to pay a royalty. Uh, so that's new. So now if you're making huge money off D&D, you're going to have to start paying a royalty for that. Bottom line, the OGL is not going away. You will still be able to create new D&D content, publish it anywhere, and game with your friends and followers in all the ways that make this game and community so great. The thousands of creators publishing across Kickstarter, DMs Guild, and more are a critical part of the D&D experience, and we will continue to support and encourage them to do that through 1D&D and beyond. So there you have it, folks. The OGL is not going away, and those rumors were false. Meetings with creators to inform them what was happening that included a non-disclosure agreement. We're going to tell them this stuff and not trap them in a room and laugh and say, haha, the OGL is going away and now you can't talk about it. Conspiracy stuff for clicks, I imagine. What is really happening is pretty benign. You're going to have to agree to the open gaming license in writing before you publish your content. I mean, fair enough. And if you are getting really, really wealthy, you're going to have to pay a higher royalty. And that is not really affecting anybody that I was worried about with any changes to the OGL. You're getting rich and you got to pay more royalties. Boohoo. The new OGL will apparently block any possible D&D NFTs. Thank you very much. That's great. Honestly, this shouldn't be big news. The OGL is going to have some moderate, benign changes coming to it with one D&D. And this wouldn't be big news, except there has recently been some fear mongering that has gotten the D&D community scared, and people have done well off that, gotten lots of clicks. So hopefully, people will start to relax about this stuff. You can still use Roll20 for 1D&D, your favorite content creators can still make their content, they can still publish it everywhere they want to publish it, but if you're richy rich, and you're getting rich off the OGL, you're going to have to pay some royalties, and so sad for you. That's all I want to let you know. Otherwise, until next time, I'm going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.